This is a normal rainbow, but this is a different type of rainbow because it's a value rainbow. Well, it's actually not perfect, and the real shape to represent it is in 3D, but why are some colors brighter or darker than others? And what can you learn from it? The answer to the first question comes from two places. One, the physical interaction of light to your eyes, and two, the digital equation for converting color into grayscale. When it comes to how you perceive things, your eyes have photoreceptors called cones and rods in the retina. Cones primarily perceive color, and rods primarily perceive light. Meaning that if you don't have cones in your eyes, your world will look monochrome. Meanwhile, if you have no rods, maybe it might look something like this. Cones help you perceive color, but there are three different types of cones. Long, medium, and short cones. L cones, which are sensitive to red, M cones, which are sensitive to green, and S cones, which are sensitive to blue. RGB, the same exact color model used for screens and monitors. Now there's a lot of similarities between digital and the human model, but the main difference is the amount of each cone that the human model has. This is a close-up of a screen using RGB LEDs, and this is a distribution of cone cells of a person, typically having the most reds, decent amount of greens, and the fewest blues. Which is why greenish yellow is the brightest perceivable color for a human, because it's the wavelength that engages the majority of the cone cells. However, in digital, yellow seems to be the brightest color. Why is that? Because yellow is created by turning on the red and green LED at its highest output, thus projecting more luminance. So yellow on a screen literally projects more light particles than greenish yellow. But what does this have to do with grayscale? Like, why do colors like orange, cyan, and green appear as the same value in grayscale? This is where the grayscale formula comes in. It is a formula that closely represents a human's perception of color and brightness, which is grayscale equals 0.299 times red, plus 0.587 times green, plus 0.114 times blue, where you insert the strength of the corresponding color on a scale from 0 to 255, and the output being the same value that all three RGB will have to create that grayscale color. And if you plug in the numbers in the formula, it then makes sense why orange, cyan, and green end up having the same output in the formula. Now, what does this have to do with art? I'm not sure, but here's a couple interesting things I've learned while researching this topic. This is a colorful looking image, but if you turn it grayscale, it ends up being a singular shade of gray, which was done by having a grayscale color on the bottom with a rainbow gradient on top that I just distorted to give it a cool look, then turn the rainbow layer type into color. I guess you can call this effect mono value. You can also do the same thing by replacing the rainbow with any picture. Here's some examples on famous artworks. Here's on a more stylized art. And you can also do it on video. If you want to know how I made the value rainbow, I basically created a black and white gradient, added a perpendicular rainbow gradient on top, then switched the mode to color, then roughly traced out the most saturated peaks, and stretched it out.